I really quite enjoy traveling, and in my travels, I have become a bit of a lover of maps, and that's partly because I have a really terrible sense of direction. <laughs> I got lost. I carry around a red dot. <laughs> precisely tag the place on which I stand as the very spot of exactly where I am, marked by this red dot. A kind of you are here for wherever I go, so that no matter where I am, I will always know you are here. <laughs> you see, there are places that I've been that don't appear on any map. Some of my travels leave a geographical gap. Few of these places lie within the borders of any nations. My red dot does not apply to these metaphysical locations. For example, I have cruised along denial. I've sat deep in the blues. I've tried to walk a mile in someone else's shoes. I've followed in others' footsteps. I've walked along the razor's edge. I've jumped in to the deep end. I've gone in way over my head. I've kept my head above water. I've been head and shoulders above. I've worn my heart on my sleeve. I've been head over heels in love. I've been a top cloud nine. I've walked along without a care. I've sometimes crossed the line. I've popped down to the depths of despair. I've spent a few long hours in the dark nights of my soul. I've gone out on a limb. I've spun out of control. I've had to face the music. I've had to take the upper hand. I've put my foot in my mouth. I've buried my head in the sand. I've been struck down with worry. I've sometimes lost my mind. I've spent days deep in thought. But I always seem to find my way back to remembering to stand here on this spot to let go of my focus on the places that I'm not and acknowledge where I am as the present reappears. So this red dot is my reminder. Hey girl, you are here. Thank you. Hey is actually waiting for the bus. It's totally different here and it kind of blows my mind. And there's this old woman stood drenched in the rain. But I was bone dry, one of the lucky five who had arrived first and stood under the shelter at the front of the queue. The bus was due, and I looked at the time and then looked at this line that extended out beyond the shelter and into the rain, but acknowledged the order and time that each person had arrived at this stop. It was a systematic organization of rain-soaked bodies. Any disruption to this queue would have been unspeakably naughty. Each drenched person in line adhered to the unspoken queue rule that thou shalt not jump the bus stop queue, or else you shall face a deluge of dirty looks and an unbearable torrent of tuts. And yet, I looked around and I noticed there was more than enough room under the shelter for everyone who was waiting. This unspoken rule, I thought, could use some debating. What if, I thought, I shouted down the queue, hello, Look here, all of you. There's plenty of room under here where it's dry. Break free from the queue. Come along, don't be shy. You, yes you, all of you, step up. There's plenty of room under here to bunch up. Standing under here where it's dry and out of the rain makes so much more sense and is a far more sane way to deal with the situation of the incessant precipitation in this queue-forming nation. <laughs> and people would look up. Shaken out of their cue trance and glance at each other with lids of hope in their eyes, they would step forward, ignoring the order of the cue transforming from a line into a group, all dry and huddled, smiling together, happy and cheery under the bus stop shelter. Cars would drive by and drivers would double take and think, what the hell has happened to that cue? <laughs> People waiting for the bus look so happy and cheery that drivers would envy us. We'd all be so happy to be out of the rain that we'd chat about all sorts, what we plan for our days. And the two old women who had inspired my call to action would start clapping 
applauding this revolutionary happening. They would tell their friends, and word would spread fast, and news of this one simple, noble act would ripple across the land and launch a tide of change. No more standing in the rain while waiting for the bus just because of silly Q rules. It's really too foolish to follow rules that don't make sense. The entire country would stop such nonsense. Everyone everywhere would maximize the use of the bus shelter space, and maybe just maybe engage with each other face to face. I envisioned a Q revolution taking over the land. But then the guy in front of me extended his hand to beckon the oncoming bus to stop for all of us. I quickly fished into my pocket for my bus fare, and there, in that moment, my revolutionary ideas were abandoned. And we all boarded the bus in an orderly fashion. <laughs> Um, I am. Um, uh, the first two poems I've just shared are from a solo show that I've written <coughs> called The Geography of Me, about my travels. Uh, and uh, I have brought some booklets along with me that have all the poems from the show uh, in them. Um, so I've got a few available to sell, so if you want to find me later, they're three pounds each. And there's a picture of me standing on my red dot, which I hand-colored in, so each one is very unique. So yeah, so I've got some of these, um, so come and find me later if you're interested. And the next poem is from this as well. So uh, I'm going to carry on with that because I know we've got a, a schedule tonight and, and I just want to keep, keep to time. I'm, uh, I'm one of those people that's kind of always aware of time. You could kind of call me like a master craftsperson of time management. I carve time, shape time, make time, and find time. I try to keep an eye on the clock at all times so that I never ever run out of time. I match each task in my day to an amount of minutes. I say, this will take 20 minutes. That should take no more than half an hour. I love the feeling of power that comes from the control I have over my time because I only have a limited amount. We all only have a limited amount. I have no time to break to breathe because if I do, inevitably my mind wanders outside of the schedule I have carefully defined and I find I long for the next time I get to see your face and be in the same place as mm. you. I long for the time when we can forget about our limited minutes and days and lay together for hours on end and not worry about how we spend our time together in the same place. Who has time for these thoughts? Quick, pick up the pace, make a list of my to-dos today, and may I please get everything done. I work, I thrive, I run on keeping control over every last minute of every last moment. I feel the need, the need to please fill each hour up and make the time go by so that I don't miss you too much. And yet, and yet I miss you so much. You are with me all of the time. In my thoughts, my heart, my mind, no matter how many tasks I craft, no matter how many minutes I master, no matter how hard I wish the time would pass faster, hardly a moment goes by that I don't see you in my mind's eye and long for the next time I get to see your face and can share your space and can finally, indefinitely, be in the same place as you.